I'm going to talk to you about something that uh, I'm incredibly passionate about. I've spent the past 20 some odd years building businesses that help marketers be successful and uh, aspire to help marketers be successful. And I think there's some incredibly powerful things that are happening now that we don't, as an industry or as a community, spend enough time talking about. So that's what I want to talk about today. This slide looks so much better on my laptop, I can tell you. But at Bitly, we are incredibly passionate about creating an internet that people can see clear across. We believe that the internet is one of the most powerful transformative technologies of all time, and that uh, the open and free access to information and connections powers that innovation and powers the, all the things that make us so happy and engaged. And all of it gets paid for, by the way, by marketers. Everything is supported by the guys who have the dollars, and those, those folks are the marketers, and marketers pay for all the things that we get to do on the internet and a lot of the innovation uh, that we get to enjoy. And the power of digital marketing and the power of one-to-one, -one, the promise of the ability to connect with any customer at any time with the right message that is so meaningful and that really works, it, that's the promise. The, po the problem is all of this technology and all of this innovation is created actually a much more difficult time for marketers. Do we have marketers in the room? Can you see a show of hands? Right? Okay, so you're expected as a marketer to grow your numbers every day, every week, every month, every quarter, because we can actually measure it now. But your customers live on so many different channels and you're, you have a countless number of solutions to help you solve uh, a lot of your problems. And it's almost like, thank you so much for all this technology and all this, this uh, complications. It's really hard to even do my job now. And it's being driven primarily by a couple of key trends. Obviously, the move to mobile has transformed the customer experience and the fragmentation and the, um, and the complications of interacting with your customers on phones has made it incredibly difficult. We're all using multiple devices. The average house, this is about half of what my house has, um, at least. Uh, it, and we're constantly switching. So think about it for a second. Your goal as a marketer now, you're expected to own the entire life cycle of your customer, from awareness at the highest part of the funnel all the way through to engagement and uh, lifetime value for your customers. That's a powerful, powerful opportunity, um, and the budget is all flowing to you, and you're now a rock star in your organization. The problem is, it's really, really hard to identify your customers and speak to them across a really fragmented landscape, especially when they're doing so many different things on those phones and being cross-channel. The customer journey is not a perfect funnel. The customer journey is a maze. And the customer uh, winds that way through the maze, and you need to know every step of the way. And here's where I get really, really passionate because we as an industry are not talking about the big three enough. The big three, as you probably know, are Facebook, Google, and Apple. And if you talk about marketing today, if you talk about reaching your customers, and you're not intimate with the business strategies and the platforms and the things these guys are doing, then you will not be successful. It's impossible to reach your customers on phones if you're not on iOS or Android. It's impossible to reach your customers on phones when they're spending 80% of their time on Facebook and Facebook-controlled apps. 50 minutes a day on Facebook, a billion people. And Apple controls half the, I, half the OS market and Android the other half. You have to understand what these guys are trying to do. So I want to talk about them and talk about the implications about, on customer experience as well and some things that I think you should know. Again, the massive volume of time spent. So Facebook is a really interesting, amazing company. Some of the smartest people in the world are working at Facebook today. And their scale is unlike anything we've ever seen. There's never been another Facebook. Google, at its height, um, was incredible and is incredible. But the sheer volume and the growth that Facebook is seeing quarter over quarter, the law of big numbers implies you shouldn't, they shouldn't be growing so much every quarter. They are. It's incredible. And what Facebook is trying to do is own and control the entire customer experience and the entire customer ownership. They have a massive advertising business, and it is in their best interest to get more people online, to get more people on Facebook, 
to capture information and data about those customers and to keep and to sell advertising to, to, for marketers to reach those customers on the Facebook platform. Facebook does a remarkable job with customer experience. They are um, optimizing for speed, they're optimizing for bandwidth, they're literally trying to get every person in the world online on Facebook as evidenced by some of their uh, um, initiatives uh, globally. And one of the things that they did recently is they've launched Facebook Instant Articles. Facebook Instant Articles load about five times faster than the average page. These are pages that are hosted on Facebook. Marketers and publishers publish their content up into the Facebook platform and it loads much, much faster. I love them as a consumer. I search them out. They have the little uh, icon in the corner. Is this a laser pointer? Nope, but you can see the little lightning bolt in the corner there. When you see that, that means that's a Facebook Instant Article. The publisher has posted that. It started as a trial, and now it's opening up worldwide to every marketer, every publisher to publish that content. And that keeps the user inside of Facebook. The problem is marketers don't like it. And marketers don't like it because it restricts, uh, the customer never goes to the publisher or the marketer's website. And that means uh, that they never get to own that customer. That means that the analytics are limited. The insights are limited. The ownership, the touch point with that customer is limited. And I believe that Facebook does this for all the right reasons. Facebook's a great company. They're not evil, right? But, and they are, you can see as the evolution of the platform is rolling, they're starting to do things like partnerships with some analytics companies, adding and changing the monetization and the ads on those pages, but also adding uh, email capture and other ways for marketers to connect with that customer. But fundamentally, Facebook is successful as a consumer and as a business-focused company by hosting and owning the entire experience and delighting their customers along the way. But as a marketer, you can't drop a pixel on Facebook. You can't uh, audit their numbers with a third-party uh, firm. You can't own that customer and track that customer across multiple platforms and compare your Facebook customer to your Twitter customer, to your SMS user, to your app customer. They are individual walled silos, and that's a real problem. Let's talk about Apple. Love Apple. Again, I love all these companies, but it's really important to understand. Apple is the world's best hardware company. Not so great at software. An amazing hardware company. And their business is predicated on selling you phones and the apps that run on those phones. And they want to, again, for all the right reasons, I believe, control that customer experience. Apple is masterful at this. They want you to love your phone and love the time that you spend on it and engage in the experience that they want you to have. That means apps. That doesn't mean mobile web. It doesn't mean web. And Apple is, I believe, making concerted efforts to kill the mobile web, the ad-supported mobile web. They don't like it, because, primarily because we as marketers have translated a horrible desktop monetization strategy, tons of ads, hover, pop-up ads, things that show up on top of your screen, and loading multiple pixels and data-rich pages that we have to pay for as consumers on the bandwidth We've translated that all to a smaller screen, and that sucks as a consumer. And so Apple is keeping that all there. But there's three things that I want to uh, highlight as part of uh, what Apple's doing here. And iOS 9 is groundbreaking for this. There's more than three. I'm going to do another one, too. Um, the first is universal links. Uh, Apple has a deep link protocol. Uh, deep links are, apps, are links that open up apps and take you into apps and app to app. And uh, universal links are that roots traffic on the OS level. Every, the entire internet, again, at Bitly, we believe that you should be able to see clear across the internet. The internet was, is TCP IP, connected devices, connected um, machines that, you can pr that are predictable, and you understand how they're going to go, and you can measure it, and you understand how someone else is building their protocol, so you can link to that. iOS 9 roots most of their traffic now on the OS level. It never goes out to the open web. When you click on a universal link on your phone, universal links are the ones up in the corner sometimes, uh, back to app or the forward to the other app, it stays on the OS. As a marketer, that should scare the hell out of you because you can't see it. You can't measure it, you can't track it. And Apple's not in the business of supporting that. They want you to build an app and to live on the app. They are, they, that is, 
fundamental to what they're trying to do. How many people here pull down on their screens to uh, search? Right? I do. I'm doing it more and more despite my desire not to uh, because I navigate my phone that way and increasingly web results and in-app results start to surface in there. Apple's making a very concerted play. I'd be shocked if they sold that search box to Google and the next time, even for a billion dollars, which is what they did last time. And Apple's trying to con connect the apps, the app experiences to go uh, aligned with each other as opposed to a more fluid and open web. As a consumer, that's great. If you've committed yourself and your family and all your files to iOS, it's a great experience. And even if you haven't, it's a great experience. But as a marketer, you need to understand that owning and seeing your customer and owning that experience across all platforms is incredibly difficult when this, this one platform is trying to redefine that in different ways. The other one is ad blocking. Ad blocking is super important to understand because it's not just about what you see or don't see, it's about what's happening under the hood. And Apple doesn't call this ad blocking. How many people have ad blockers and install them on their, on their phones or desktop? Right? That's about right. It's about 15%. Um, and we see that number going up and higher. And some of the internal numbers that uh, some of our partners are 20, 30% uh, are, are using ad blockers. And the thing to understand about ad blockers is yes, it blocks the ads. But Apple calls them content blockers. And devs, engineers, if there are any, any devs in the room? Nope, there's a marketer conference, one or two. Right? It's called resource blocking. They're blocking fundamental components of the code to keep both ads, but also privacy and tracking and analytics. The power of the internet for personalization and to delight and surprise your customers, it doesn't work without cookies, it doesn't work without personalization. You have to be careful about privacy, but iOS 9, which surface the ability to very easily add an ad blocker or a content blocker also blocks all third-party analytics and all third-party tracking and that is hugely hugely valuable if you know under the hood that every marketer in the world uses Omniture or Nielsen or Google Analytics or Mixpanel or Localytics or one of these companies to help measure what's working and what doesn't and fundamentally if you don't measure something you can't improve it. You don't know where to spend your time, where to spend your effort, and where not to spend your time if the platform you're building on is blocking the tools that allow you to do that. That's really troublesome um, as a marketer, and it's something that I think people really need to understand more of. It's not just about making the ads, the pages load faster. It's not just about having a cleaner page, which as an industry we need to do a better job at. It's about the fundamental measurement and ownership of your customer and being able to measure them. On the open web, if you use Omniture from Adobe on lots on all your tags and all your pages, you can watch your customer go from site to site. But as soon as you get onto um, into an app world or into mobile web on Safari, uh, increasingly, you can't. Think of all the billions of dollars of infrastructure and billions of dollars of marketing plans and initiatives that have been built on core analytics and uh, pixels. That is at uh, significant risk, we believe. We talked about that. We talked about that. Google, ad supported mobile web. Facebook, I'm sorry, Apple is hardware and apps. Google is software and ads and the web. And Facebook, I'm sorry, Google continues to own market share here in a major, major way because they know so much about us and they are so intent driven in leveraging their search data. But as you can see, they're doing very similar things. They want the pages to load fast, they want to keep people on their pages. They're, they're realizing, I believe, that Facebook's dominance and growth is coming because of the controlled user experience. Facebook has been specific about delivering an experience that is tight and consistent and manageable for their advertisers so that they can control it. Google's starting to do the same thing. Accelerated mobile pages at Google AMP. These are um, lighter weight hosted pages that deliver limited features and functionality, but higher speed and, uh, uh, and, and more predictable load times. But Google is also starting to uh, be concerned about what, the, what third parties and, uh, and tracking and insights that allow you that they allow you to see. 
And I think it's just really important and urgent that we as an industry understand that without your customer data, you can't create a customer experience. And customer experience, remember, is all the way from, hey, I've heard of this company or product, all the way to, I recommend it and I'm buying it again. That's our job as marketers. And without the data, you can't create that customer experience. And this is not, a, I, I promised I wasn't going to sell Bitly on this, on this stage today, but I will tell you that links exist in every single digital channel, whether you see them or not. And they are a crucial tool for seeing and owning user uh, experience across every platform. And this is the, the, the maze of customer experience and the maze of customer journey happens on multiple platforms throughout the day. And you can offer your customers the best possible experience if you can't connect the dots on these three platforms. So what should you do? Number one, you need to really understand and build your customer journey. You need to understand the possible touch points. We have customers who have thousands of customer journeys that they map because they want to understand. Some of this can be done predictably. Some of these can be done um, you know, just by sharpening your pencil, as it were. But you need to understand what the pathways are and how to control them. You need to have an integrated data strategy. If you are working in one department in your marketing organization or in your company, and there are other people who are using other solutions, and there's not a central data strategy to connect the dots from email to search to social to mobile marketing to digital paid, if you don't have a unified data strategy, you're going to lose because you're not going to have the ability to actually leverage the work that you're doing um, in, a, in a meaningful way. And then you need to connect the dots on those tools. There are, uh, there are heavy, expensive tools and platforms, and there's lightweight and, uh, things that you can use as well uh, to connect the dots on those. But if you're not working together as an organization with a data strategy, a customer experience, a customer journey strategy, and some sort of tool set to bring it all together, you're at real risk for doing uh, for, for, not, for not being successful. And we think that going forward, the year of integration, the time for integration to make these point solutions and products and customer experiences work together uh, is upon us because we feel the pain and it needs to start getting better. If you're not thinking about customer experience, you're probably lonely because we're all thinking about how to drive customers through and how to delight them and how to make it happen in a better way. It comes from data. If you don't measure it, you can't improve it. If you can't count it, it didn't happen. Capture all of it, bring it together from each channel, from each device, and store it and analyze it and understand it from one place. And that is my talk. Thank you so much. Thank you.